Baptists have played a vital role in the history of the United States and before. We could go all the way back to 1638 and the founding of the First Baptist Church in Newport, Rhode Island by John Clark. Move ahead to 1651 and the beating of Obadiah Holmes, to 1663 and the Rhode Island Charter that John Clark was able to acquire from Charles II in England. And that document granted religious liberty for the first time in the history of the world. One of my favorite stories is that of Joab Houghton and the Hopewell Baptist Church in Hopewell, New Jersey. That church had been built by John Hart, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, who was a Baptist. At the end of the service, he stood and said, Men of New Jersey, the Redcoats are killing our brethren in New England. Who rides with me to Boston? And every man in the church said, I, and they rode off to fight for our freedom and our liberty and to give us the nation that we have now. His grandson was a man named Spencer Houghton Cone, and he was the pastor of the First Baptist Church in New York City. He was responsible for helping to finance Isaac McCoy, one of the greatest missionaries in the history of the United States, and McCoy is one that deserves our study. All of these stories build a history that Baptists ought to be unbelievably thankful for. And we could talk about many of those things, but since the theme of this meeting is what mean these stones, there's one that's very personal to me. I was saved at the age of 15. I was at a winter camp at a place called New England Keswick. And the preacher preached and I realized that I needed to be saved even though I had heard the gospel my entire life. 33 years later, I found out that on the grounds of that campground is buried a great Baptist preacher. His name is Joshua Morse. Joshua Morse was born in Rhode Island in 1726 and he died in 1795. God used him in a great way to bring about, first of all, revival and church planting in Connecticut, New York, but he also led in bringing about religious liberty to that area. You see, in those days, it was against the law to be a Baptist in Connecticut. And while he was born in Rhode Island and he was saved under the preaching of George Whitfield, he was convinced of Baptist principles and those things became important to him. As he started preaching in Stonington, Connecticut, he met tremendous opposition. This is the history of the Baptist denomination in America by David Benedict. It was written in 1813. And he gives us something of the life of Joshua Morris. And one of the accounts that he talks about is when Morris began preaching there that first day in Stonington, Connecticut. And he was arrested. It was against the law to preach, as we've said, and the first time Mr. Morse preached in Stonington, he was apprehended, carried before a magistrate, and he was sentenced to pay the ten shillings or be whipped ten lashes at the public whipping post. The fine he could not pay, and of course the lashes he was preparing to receive. He was taken to the post by order of the magistrate, but the constable, instead of inflicting the lashes, pled the cause of the innocent sufferer, remonstrated, against the wickedness of the law, the cruelty of the court, and utterly refused performing the barbarous duty which had been assigned him. After spending some time in this awkward position, the constable tendered the magistrate from his own pocket the fine which had been exacted. The magistrate, probably ashamed of his conduct, offered it to Mr. Morse and bid him receive it and go peaceably away. But as he would pay no money, he would receive none. And his persecutors, finding him rather unmanageable, went off and left him to take his own course. Morse continued preaching in that area for years. He pastored for more than 50 years. But during those early days of his ministry, one day a man came in, and this would have been a religious leader of the town. He came in while Morse was preaching, put his hand over his mouth, and then had one of his cohorts start pummeling him while he was preaching. Another time while he was in prayer, men barged into the church service dragged him by his hair down the stairs out into the street and beat him so badly that he bore the scars of that beating until his death. Another time a man came in while he was preaching and hit him about the head with a club and Morse fell to the ground. As he rose shakily, he said, if you die a natural death, God hath not spoken by me. That year that man went off to sea and fell off the boat into the sea and died. Joshua Morse was an amazing man of God. He endured things that we could never imagine for the gospel's sake. He planted churches in Connecticut and New York, and God used him greatly. Two of the things that I think are most notable about him, apart from his preaching, are this. 
1818, the Connecticut legislature finally added into their state constitution an article on religious liberty. Remember, it took until 1818 for that to happen in Connecticut. The man who wrote that article was a Baptist preacher from Suffield, Connecticut, and his name was Asahel Morris. He was Joshua Morris's youngest son. It's amazing what God used him to do. But another important component of Joshua Morris's ministry was he had the opportunity to participate with Wade Palmer and some other preachers in ordaining another young Baptist preacher. His name was Shubel Stearns. Shubel Stearns went on to be the pastor of the Sandy Creek Baptist Church, and through his ministry, God used him to found the Bible Belt. And thousands and thousands of Baptist churches have come from that ministry. Imagine if Joshua Morris hadn't been faithful. Imagine if those beatings had caused him to step aside, to give up, to quit, to follow an easier path. But he didn't. The Holy Spirit enabled Joshua Morris to remain faithful. What mean these stones? When I see the grave of Joshua Morris, and I see what God used him to do, and how he contributed to liberty in the United States of America before the Declaration of Independence, before the Constitution, when I see what these men did, I look back. What mean these stones? There have been men who have gone before us, who have been willing to suffer, and suffer greatly for the faith. And it makes me want to continue as well.